Hello and welcome. Uh, good morning to everyone in Australia. I believe it's Friday morning for everyone joining us. Um, it's actually getting into the evening where I am, so we're having a little bit of time traveling fun here today. Um, but I uh, see a few people still trickling in, so welcome. Feel free to say hi in the chat um, where you're from, who you are, if you feel like it. Um, and uh, we'll just wait another minute or two before we jump into everything. Uh, just while a few people get settled in. Um, throughout the presentation today, we will also have a number of polls that will pop up. So in Crowdcast, you'll see a section for polls. Uh, so as we publish those, we'll try to let you know. Weigh in on those as they come up. Fairly basic questions, you know, what kind of industry do you work in? Is this stuff useful at all? That kind of thing. Um, and if you have any questions, that's probably one of the big purposes of today's webinar is to make sure we answer questions that you may have about Epifan Pearl products. So there is a question and answers panel in Crowdcast as well. Uh, if you ask questions in chat, I may miss them. Uh, so try to put them into the Q&A panel. There's also an upvote function in the Q&A panel. So if you see someone else's question, that is something that uh, that you want answered as well. Use that upvote, uh, and that helps change the ranking on my side, so I can try and prioritize answering those questions, which we will get to uh, later on in the presentation. Um, so again, I'm still seeing a few more people joining us, so welcome. Uh, a few people saying hi in chat. David Griffiths saying hi. Andrew Patton, I'm certainly glad to see that you're here, Andrew, of course. Uh, and Stuart saying hi as well. So great. Um, Great to see everyone. Um, like I said, we'll get started here in just a moment. Want to make sure everyone's got settled in. Hopefully you got your coffees in hand or already second coffee in hand. And, uh, and we'll get started here in a moment. All right. Okay. Um, I think we'll jump in here. Uh, I'm not seeing the numbers tick up too much more quickly here, so let's let's start uh, let's start in. And uh, if anyone joins us a little late, hopefully they can catch up a little bit. Uh, so today's webinar is all about Perl hardware encoders, uh, sort of an overview of the Perl family of hardware encoders that we offer here at Epifan uh, and are sold through our partner down in Australia, AP Tech. Uh, the gentlemen from AP Tech are in the chat. So if you have any uh, purchasing questions, um, you know, please let them know. Of course, reach out to them as well. Um, they're in the chat if you have any quick uh, procurement questions as well, you can ask them. Uh, Andrew and David are both there. And uh, let's jump into it. So for those of you not familiar with the Epifan Pearl uh, family of products, uh, this is a basically line of hardware encoders. Uh, there is soon to be very imminently three models. Um, up until very recently, there were two. Um, the Pearl Nano, the smallest in this line, uh, had, was announced a little while ago and, and we're getting very close to getting that into the hands of our partners and customers. Um, the Pearl Mini and the Pearl 2. Uh, the Pearl 2 has been out for four years or so. Pearl Mini for about two and a half years. Uh, so there's a pretty, uh, pretty good history of use with these different models. And each one offers some slightly different and unique uh, features and, and options uh, that can help kind of with whatever it is that you need. In all cases, these are standalone hardware encoders for live streaming and recording. Pearl Nano kind of geared to be that perfect fit, small, compact uh, streaming recording. Pearl Mini, sort of that simplified uh, entry into live production on a, on a single dedicated box. And then the Pearl 2 being the biggest one, uh, really the big all-in-one um, you know, production system. And, and we're kind of going to today break that down as to what that looks like and how we might use those. In all three cases, the idea with the Pearl family, uh, the philosophy, the design intention uh, of all models within the Pearl family is to be versatile, reliable, easy to use, and offer professional quality. And so some of the things there uh, could be examples like we our audio inputs. We like to use XLR uh, audio inputs for analog audio as a professional audio signal. Uh, the casings are metal. They're not plastic, that kind of thing. Uh, that, that's part of the objectives 
with Perl, packing in as much of these professional features as we can while still making it as easy to use as possible. The advantage there is if it's easy to use, you're more likely to actually use it. And of course, uh, could be put in the hands of just about anybody in a wide range of different industries and use cases. So let's start off with the Perl Nano. This is the uh, most recent entry into the, into the Perl family of encoders. Um, like I said, this is uh, available for sort of uh, a pre-order through your, your partners or, or we have a wait list on our website as well. Um, we're expecting shipping uh, to, to begin uh, very, uh, very late this month or early next month. Uh, so this is imminent uh, to be available to, to, to actually get into your hands. The idea with the Pearl Nano here is that it is a full HD video recorder, streamer, splitter, scaler. Uh, we have two video inputs, one HDMI and one SDI. Uh, there's a small two-inch screen built into the front of it with an array of buttons uh, for controlling some of the menus on that screen. There are two XLR line-level inputs on the back for professional audio. You can record to a removable SD card or optionally, you could actually install an M.2 SSD drive uh, into the open bay uh, for, for larger or, or more permanent uh, storage installation on the Nano. One of the things that makes the Nano most unique in the Pearl family is that it has an HDMI pass-through port. This is there to be basically a zero latency pass-through of that HDMI input giving you that splitter functionality built into the device. So this means you can easily put it in line with uh, your, your main source and maybe feed a projector at the same time without any extra gear. Another part that's fairly unique is that um, you actually have two different power options on the Nano. Uh, it will have a 12 volt DC universal power supply with a typical barrel jack with a screw on uh, connector to make it secure but you can optionally power it with PoE Plus as well, meaning that if you have a network infrastructure that has PoE Plus from a switch, you could power the Nano directly from that and not need that external power supply. This makes it really, really, really easy to integrate in a bunch of different scenarios without having to run extra cables, power supplies, and so on. So you can see here in this slide, there's a couple of pictures, the front and the back there. Um, the top one, you can see on the front, it has the SD card slot, a headphone jack for monitoring audio, that screen, and the buttons. The screen, like the other Pearl models, will give you some confidence monitoring, uh, an audio VU meter, some timers for your streaming and recording. Uh, the buttons will let you navigate some menus on that screen. And then there's dedicated buttons for starting recording and starting streaming um, with, with LEDs to give you an indicator of what's going on there. Around the back, you have all those ports I talked about, the XLR ports. It's also RCA jacks back there for consumer line level signals, the HDMI in, the HDMI pass through, the SDI in, the Ethernet jack supporting PoE+. Plus. An HDMI output that could be used as a program out instead of a zero latency pass through and a USB port that we could use for USB audio, for example. Uh, and so there's a few options uh, available here. So where do we see Pearl Nano fit? It's a very small box. I, I wish I had one here in my home I could show you on camera. Unfortunately, I don't have my own yet, hopefully soon. Um, but Pearl Nano is, a, we've kind of said it's that, that perfect fit streamer and recorder, meaning it can fit in a lot of smaller scenarios. So smaller scale live events where you have fairly minimal setup, you're not looking for necessarily a big overproduced production, just fairly basic, maybe one camera, one presentation, simple side-by-side -side or picture-in-picture -picture layout, no switching, just a simple mix, stream and record. It could also be used as an SRT contribution encoder. Uh, here at Epifan, we've been talking about SRT a lot recently since we added it to the Pearl family. But SRT is becoming extremely popular as a remote contribution stream type. In fact, it's part of what we're doing to produce this webinar right now. 
with the Nano, it's something that you could pre-configure a Nano with uh, set up for exactly that. Ship it to someone remotely, uh, have them start the SRT stream and, and have it feed back to your central point. And they don't really need to know a whole lot about the device. Um, so there's some great uh, possibilities there. It's also great as a streaming or recording add-on to maybe a larger production environment. So maybe you have an existing uh, you know, broadcast switcher with 10 cameras or whatever it is, and it, that's fine. And all you really need is something to take the main program out of that environment and handle all of the encoding, compression, and streaming onto the final destination. Pearl Nano is a great fit for that scenario. We take the SDI or the HDMI program out from your, your, your larger setup, do all the heavy lifting of the encoding, and send it on uh, as the stream. So uh, if you have any questions about Pearl Nano, make sure you throw those in the Q&A panel, um, and I'll, uh, I'll get to those uh, at the end of the presentation. Moving kind of one step up the family is Pearl Mini. So as I mentioned before, Pearl Mini's been out for a couple of years now, and we've seen tremendous growth, uh, especially this year, in the ways Pearl, have, uh, Pearl Mini has been used in different environments. The original design intention was actually very much focused on small scale live event production, medium scale live event production, but also the education market, lecture capture and, and other similar style of events. It can capture, stream and record full HD. It does have some switching capability. It can record and stream at the same time. It does have some HDMI output capabilities to, to function as a, as a loop through or, or program out. And it does have some scaling features built in uh, from those, those HD inputs if, if we need to downscale. Pearl Mini has three inputs, uh, two HDMI, one SDI. It has options for some network-based feeds as well, like RTSP. Uh, and it has a much larger seven-inch touchscreen built into it. And this is where it actually works really, really well in that lecture capture style scenario. You could put Pearl Mini on a podium or on a table in the front of the lecture hall and you could actually have someone who's doing the presentation or, or the class do a lot of their own control from that touch screen. Um, they can see the confidence monitor, they can start stop streaming and recording, they can even do switching directly from that touch screen if they'd like. So as a user interface, it's, it's very friendly and easy um, to put just about anywhere. From an audio perspective, um, of course, HDMI and SDI embedded audio is there. But we have uh, probably the most unique analog audio options on Pearl Mini. There are two XLR TRS mic slash line level uh, inputs that also can provide phantom power. So what this means is we could use those as maybe a balanced stereo pair at line level coming from an existing audio infrastructure. Or we could actually use them as two separate mono microphone inputs, including providing phantom power to microphones that might need that. This gives us a ton of potential from a small scale, medium scale live event. We could connect our cameras and a presentation system to this, run two microphones directly off of it and not need any other infrastructure surrounding it. This gives us a ton of flexibility. Um, so that's, uh, we've already seen that used in a ton of different ways and it's always, uh, it's always great to see new ways of leveraging that. Pearl Mini uses a removable SD card for storage and you'll find that on the front of the device as you'll see in these pictures. Um, and like its little brother, the Nano, you'll see a headphone jack there. There's some LEDs to indicate recording and streaming status. Um, and then around the back, you have all those ports that we talked about. In addition to the XLR and TRS, you'll notice there's also the RCA jacks, and there's also a 3.5 millimeter microphone jack back there as well. Um, so all told, Pearl Mini has actually the, the widest range of, of flexibility uh, in terms of analog audio inputs uh, in the family. Um, so that's, uh, it's an interesting thing. So if you're looking at a bunch of different audio options or, or audio flexibility is a, is a key to your workflow, Pearl Mini might actually be the best choice. 
So where does it fit? Well, as I mentioned earlier, um, you know, the design of Pearl Mini was very much uh, born out of, of what we saw as a need in the education market with things like lecture capture. But that lends itself well to maybe slightly more complex productions than the Nano can do, since we have multiple sources with switching built into the Mini. So maybe it's a shared production environment where ease of use is critical, so that larger touchscreen is helpful. Or maybe it's not a huge event, so we only have two or three cameras and need some basic switching. It can handle that. Um, or again, lecture capture or similar types of events, very common, uh, and it's a great fit for that. It's still a very small, compact device, so you could definitely take it on the road for mobile use. Um, while still not lacking any flexibility in those audio inputs we talked about or the switching capabilities uh, and still making it very easy to use. So if you have any questions about Pearl Mini, again, be sure to throw that into the Q&A panel and, uh, and we'll, uh, we'll take a look at that a little later. So now for the big one, uh, Pearl 2. Uh, this is the biggest model in the Pearl line. Uh, Pearl 2 can support streaming and recording in up to 4K. Uh, it has six video inputs, four HDMI, two SDI. It has four XLR line level inputs, which can be two separate balanced stereo pairs or four mono inputs. They are line level, so there needs to be some sort of preamp or, or, or mixer in front of it. It has a four inch touchscreen built into it, and there's a specific reason for that that I'll show in another slide. Uh, but it offers basically the same functionality that the Pearl Mini does. Um, it's just a smaller screen. Pearl 2 uses a 500 gig uh, internal SSD for recording. Um, so that, that's built in. We don't need to provide an SD card or anything like that. Some of the most unique advantages besides just the sheer number of inputs, you know, twice that what the Mini offers, uh, that Pearl 2 also can provide is slightly more advanced features like NDI support and chroma keying support. Uh, this kind of adds a much deeper, more flexible, broader ranging, uh, flexible kind of production system. Uh, again, all, all kind of built in. So um, that, uh, that is um, kind of already there in Pearl 2. And uh, of course we have more things, more things planned. You'll notice that it uses a built-in power supply as well, which can be very handy because just a standard PC style power cord, um, any of them will do. There's no external bricks or anything like that. Um, so it's a, it's a great fit into maybe a more permanent installation uh, with, with customized wiring if necessary. On the front, again, here in the picture, you'll see, you know, kind of looks very similar to the others. You've got that touch screen, the headphone jack, power button. And then around the back, you have all those ports we've talked about. You'll notice there are two HDMI output ports. These are programmable, like the Pearl Mini has, except there are two of them. There's a physical RS-232 serial port. This could be used to integrate Pearl into a third-party control system over RS-232 serial. Of course, USB ports for USB audio or even uh, USB webcams and then gigabit ethernet. Um, one thing I'll note is that all Pearl models, all three of them, um, do offer our API controls. Um, generally, as, as you know, Pearl Nano and Pearl Mini do not have RS-232 ports physically built into them, typically people are going to leverage the HTTP network-based APIs on those models. On Pearl 2, it does have that physical serial RS-232. Um, so you actually have the option there of, of integrating it that way. Uh, but it's far more common these days to see the, the HTTP API uh, being used. So where does Pearl 2 fit? Uh, what is it? It's, it's ideal if we need a truly all-in-one standalone video production system for maybe a, a permanent studio install or maybe a, a larger scale video production, or maybe if I need 4K, um, it's a great tool as sort of the production hub to bring in as many as six 
SRT feeds. So if you think back to Nano, we were talking about SRT contribution encoding. If we were using Perl 2 as our centralized hub, we could feed six nanos into that, kind of mix and switch them all together and, and ultimately send another feed back out. And then with the Perl 2, we actually have rack mount versions of it, including the rack mount twin. And I'll show you a picture of that in a moment. Uh, the rack mount twin gives us some options in terms of saving rack space and offering the ability for some level of redundancy with a hot standby without occupying excessive space in the rack. Uh, so to give you an idea of what that looks like, I uh, have the rack mount and rack mount twin here in the pictures. Um, the single rack mount is, is identical to the, to the desktop portable version of Perl 2, uh, just in a 19 inch standard 2U rack. And the twin is in fact two separate Perl 2 units sharing that 19 inch uh, 2U rack. So they're totally independent of each other, um, but you're not occupying uh, any additional space. It's still a 2U. Uh, so that can be great for high density installations uh, or, or like I say, hot standby failover type of use cases. And you can see here on the back, the IO is identical to the, to the desktop portable version uh, in terms of the input ports and everything like that. So how do we choose a Perl? Um, well, I mean, I, I kind of answer these questions every single day with our customers. And what I find is when we're considering which one is going to fit our particular use cases, you can usually narrow that down in about four questions. Um, the first question we should ask ourselves is, how many inputs do we actually need? What are our sources that we're using? You know, do we have three cameras and a laptop? That's, that's four. That puts us into a Perl 2 right away. Or is it only one camera and one laptop? Well, then I might have choices to make. Perl Nano and Perl Mini and Perl 2. All of them support that. So then we can look at the next question. Are any of them 4K? Do I need 4K or do I only need full HD? If I need 4K, again, that puts me into Perl 2 right away. If I only need full HD, still could be any of the three models. Then I need to look at my encoded outputs, my streaming and recording options. How many separate independent encoded outputs do I need? These could be ISO recordings versus live stream program mixes or some variation therein. In many cases, you may only need a single program feed for our output for our live stream and recording. If that's all I need, then a Nano or a Perl Mini can easily handle that. But if I'm using, let's say, our first input scenario of, of four inputs, and I need to do ISO recording on all four and have a mix and switch program feed, then I need to be looking at a Perl 2. With Perl 2, I can be doing as many as six simultaneous separate independent full HD encodes. So again, we need to look at how we're going to use this in our workflow. And then finally, let's just say I only need one program mix. I uh, still could be any of the three models. Do I need NDI or do I need chroma keying? If the answer is yes to either of those, <laughs> then again, uh, that puts us looking at Perl 2. So if we run this scenario again, just to say inputs, I have one camera, one laptop for my presentation. They're only full HD. I only need a single encoded channel. And I'm not really doing any switching. I don't have NDI and I don't have chroma key. Perl Nano can do that. Rerun that again. I have one camera, one presentation feed. I'd like to do an ISO recording of my camera um, in addition to my mixed and switch program feed. Perl Mini would suit that. I have more than three inputs and I need to do ISO recordings and I need to do a lot of mixing and switching. One of my cameras is an NDI feed. Then I need to be looking at Perl 2. So I, I hope those four questions help guide you in a framework of looking at different use cases and, and which model um, would help there. So with that, 
we will move into questions. And, uh, and I see a bunch of questions have been thrown in there. Uh, so any questions that you've thought of while I was going through that presentation, please throw them into the Q&A panel. Again, if you see other people's questions that uh, you're interested in as well, feel free to use that upvote button. Um, and, uh, and I'm just going to take a look through uh, some of the questions that are in there now. Uh, David was asking, on the Nano, what API does it use? Uh, it will be using the same HTTP-based API that the Perl Mini and Perl 2 use, uh, which we have a full API document uh, available on our website for that. Um, so it, it'll use the same uh, API, same code base. Um, Lex is asking, is there a one-pager snapshot that compares the different models available? Uh, yes, we have a full compare Perl models on the Epifan website. Um, I'll see if one of my moderators can get you a link to that and throw it into chat very quickly there, Lex. Uh, but we do have sort of a side-by-side -side compare Perl models chart uh, showing those. Um, so yes, we definitely do, uh, and that, that can help. Um, Stuart was asking, any possibility on the mini to add a basic fade, fade to black, for instance? Um, so this is a, a question um, we get asked a lot, and that is about uh, custom transitions or, or special transitions on uh, Perl Mini or, or Perl 2. Um, currently, no, we don't have any transitions. It's just a simple cut. Um, now, you can definitely cut to a still image or, or an image that has some transparency overlaid on something. Um, but currently we don't have a fade. It is on our roadmap of things we would like to add, but there's no, uh, there's no specific release date assigned to that at the moment. Uh, but it is something we are looking at, uh, but currently it's, it's just a basic cut. Now, like I said, you know, there are definitely some creative ways you can use that to your advantage. Uh, you could use a, a semi-transparent PNG image, which the pearls support as a, as an image asset, overlay it on top of your camera shot in its own layout on, on Mini or Pearl 2 and, and cut to that for your fade to black pre-roll or, or post-roll um, to, to bookend your production. Uh, we do that ourselves a lot and, and many other customers do as well. Uh, can you, I was just asking, is the Nano capable of an M.2 SSD? Uh, yes, uh, the Nano will have an open M.2 SSD bay uh, for you to install your own uh, M.2 drive uh, for, for basically internal recordings, or you can use the SD card. Uh, Nano is the only model that, that offers that. Um, Jerry was just asking, are reviewing a Pearl being used right now? Uh, Yes, you're actually viewing multiple pearls <laughs> being used at the moment. Um, as I'm sure many of you guys just coming out of lockdown and quarantine are familiar with, um, we have not been in our offices here at Epifan uh, since March. Uh, we've all been working from home. Uh, so I have a Pearl Mini in my home and I have my camera and, and microphone connected to that. And I'm sending an SRT stream to a Pearl 2 that is in our studio. My producer, uh, who's hiding in the background, uh, is doing all of the switching, mixing, and production workflow uh, on that Pearl 2, which is then streaming to Crowdcast. Um, so, in fact, you're using, you're seeing two different Pearls um, in uh, ultimately feeding the Crowdcast stream today, Jerry. Um, Lex was just asking here, I understand that I can control the Perl via the GUI uh, on a touch screen with mouse and keyboard, even an iPad. Um, but if I wanted an actual tactical fader as well, is that available third party solutions? Um, so control wise, the Perls are generally a network based appliance, meaning that anything that you, has a web browser and is on the same network, can control a Perl through the browser, either the administrator interface or um, using a, it's not an iPad app, it's another browser interface, but it was designed to be mobile browser friendly. So you can use it on an iPad or an Android tablet or a smartphone. Again, any browser would do. Um, you can do it on the front touch screen as well. Or you could also connect a monitor to one of the HDMI output ports 
and enable a, a local console that would basically give you the full administrator interface uh, locally instead of over the network. Coming back to the previous question about fades, Perl currently doesn't have those transitions. So there isn't a support for a tactical fader since we don't do fades anyways. Um, you can definitely use the API commands with uh, a number, a programmable button controller if it can send HTTP API commands. Um, there's a company uh, in Scandinavia called Scarhoy. Uh, don't ask me to spell it, I can never remember, uh, but they make a range of network-based uh, button controllers for uh, production uh, switching. They, uh, they, many customers have used their products uh, to send those switching commands to Perl's. Could also be done using Crestron uh, controllers and, and a number of other options as well. Some people have even gone to the depth of using their computer with an Elgato Stream Deck button controller connected to it using the, uh, the, the companion app, uh, which would translate that into our API. So there are a number of options, but not so much a T-bar tactical fader since we don't, we don't have uh, a fade function in Perl. So usually it's just single button clicks on, on third party uh, solutions. Uh, let's see, Arnie was just asking here, uh, would like an option for Pro Mini to output the audio from the rear panel. Yeah, unfortunately that's, uh, that's not, uh, not something we can do. Uh, the only analog audio output on the Pro Mini uh, and Pearl 2 is the headphone jack that's on the front. Uh, otherwise we can embed audio into the HDMI output on the back, uh, but, but there's no audio loop through um, for say XLR, for example. Um, so, so unfortunately, not, not much we can do there. Um, Stuart, uh, just asking a question here. Am I going to cover live script? Uh, can this hook into the SRT? Uh, no, I was not planning on covering live script today. Uh, that's a pretty different product from the Pearls. Um, if you're interested in um, a webinar that's going to dive into live script more, um, let us know, let the guys at AP Tech know. We can see if, if there's something that we can arrange there. Uh, it's a very different device from the Pearl family in terms of what it does. Um, right now, and, and maybe you can clarify in chat, Stuart, but um, when you say, can this hook into SRT, do you mean SRT as a video stream or do you mean SRT as a text file uh, that LiveScript can create? Um, the reason I ask that is that it's the same um, acronym that means completely different things and they, they are totally, totally different technologies. Um, so I just want to make sure um, I address that, uh, that properly for you. Um, so are there any other questions? Please throw them into the Q&A panel. If not, we do have the polls up. So if you haven't weighed in on those yet, take a look at those. Some of those questions, um, you know, cover things like how many inputs do you typically need? Have you experimented with SRT at all? Um, which Perl does it look like would fit your needs? Uh, again, coming back to those kind of four qualifying questions uh, we went over. Does, does that fit your needs and, and what you might um, what you might have. Um, and then um, let's just see if there's any other questions that, uh, that anyone has. Uh, I do see Stuart here just commenting the text file. Um, so an SRT text file that can be created by LiveScript is um, generated after the transcription is finished. Um, so it's, it's just a text file. Um, currently the pearls cannot ingest that, um, since that would be done in post, uh, not live. Um, so can LiveScript give you a, an SRT text file after it's finished and transcription, um, session? Yes. Yes, it can. Can the pearls ingest that? No, because they're a live production system, uh, not a post-production system. Um, so they're not gonna be able to use that. Now, down the road, we're definitely looking at some interesting and exciting ways of being able to uh, more natively blend live script and pearls together. Right now, what we would do is take the HDMI output from a live script box, feed that to an HDMI input on something like Perl 2, 
use the cropping features in Perl to maybe trim that down to a lower third. And that way we would see the live transcription being overlaid on top of our video. And of course, we're feeding our audio to both of those. Um, we would essentially be getting something that's similar to closed captioning, um, although it doesn't doesn't conform to specific closed captioning standards, uh, but but it is a way of, of doing that in, a, in an automated UI kind of way. Um, so there's some ways we're hoping to make that more native down the road, uh, but for, for now, that's the way that would be done if you're looking to overlay that, that text. Uh, so I hope that makes sense, Stuart. All right, any other questions that you have for me uh, or for the gentlemen from AP Tech who are, of course, uh, in the chat? Um, if you have any questions for them on um, availability, pricing, you can, you can obviously reach out to them uh, any time. Um, but if there are no more questions, um, you can obviously check out the full line of Epifan products, including the pearls at epifan.com slash products. You can contact AP Tech uh, at their website, uh, aptech.com.au. Ap uh, and of course you can email andrew at aptech.com.au as well. Um, I'll have a slide up with that information here if, you're, if you need that. Um, but I suspect most of you know where to reach those guys down there. Um, so. I'll, uh, I'll leave it here just in case there's any other questions that pop up here last minute. I know there is a little bit of latency between what you guys are seeing and, uh, and what you say in chat. So um, we'll just see uh, if anyone has any last minute questions. Um, otherwise, uh, thank you for your time. Uh, Stuart, uh, can you clarify that question? Um, the registration process from Australia doesn't, doesn't work. Um, do you mean the registration process for our webinars or registering pearls with us? Uh, I'm not sure exactly what you mean. Maybe you can clarify, Stuart. See people seeing uh, thanks in chat. Yeah, thank you. Really appreciate you being here this morning. Um, so when you register a product, when you first log into it. Um, so you're not able to register the Pearl on our on our website, um, if that's what you mean. Um, if, if there's something wrong there, uh, maybe just send us an email to info at epifan.com and I can take a look into that for you. Um, but it, it should work to register a Pearl on our product registration page on the website. Um, once that's done, uh, the Pearl will do uh, automatic updates um, or, or offer to do those updates. Um, if, if that's not working again, you can always reach out to us. We can give you a hand with that. Um, so, um, Okay, to the firmware updates. Is it that they're just not working at all? Like, I, I, maybe I'm missing uh, part of the question there, if, if you want to clarify. Again, feel free to send uh, send me an email just to info at epifan.com, uh, Stuart, and, and I can help you uh, offline with that if you'd like. Um, Arnie, you just saying on Pearl Mini, I'd like to use the start button for multiple channels on the display. Right now, only one channel can be pre-selected I'm not able to choose uh, an alternative. So what you can do, Arnie, um, is on all pearls, um, there is a one touch control, single touch control. Um, on the front of the Pearl Mini on your touch screen, sorry, I'm looking down at mine to the side here. Um, you'll see an icon with a, with a finger kind of tapping a button. When you go in there, there's a single touch start and stop for all streaming and recording instances that you choose to participate in that. So you can specify in the administrator interface which recording instances and which streaming uh, instances you want to include in that single touch control. 
And when you use that on the front touch screen, all of them will start and stop at the same time. So if you need multiple records to start at the same time, um, that's, that's the best way to do that so that you don't have to scroll back and forth between the different confidence monitors of each individual encoding channel. Um, so you can definitely do it. Um, you just need to tap on that, that kind of hand icon uh, to bring up the single touch control. Uh, and then you'll be able to, uh, to do that. All right, I think that covers all the questions. Again, if anyone else has any other questions, uh, feel free to reach out to uh, the guys at AP Tech. Um, they know where to find uh, me and the rest of the Epifan team. Uh, you can always reach us uh, at Epifan as well, just info at epifan.com uh, or through the, the website. Um, you know, happy to, uh, happy to help with any questions you might have uh, going forward. Um, so. You want to choose only one from the screen. Arnie, I'm still not sure I totally understand um, what it is you're looking to do. I mean, when you're viewing a channel on the front touch screen of a Pearl, any streaming and recording that's set up within that encoding channel, you can start and stop those channels individually in the upper right for recording, upper left for streaming. Um, if you want to choose individual instances um, that's not there on the touch screen you would need to do that uh, through the web browser based uis you could do that through the epifan live browser based ui um, and and that might be one of the easiest ways uh, to do that um, what i'll actually do here is um, just to try to help see what that would look like this is not in the script going off script I'm going to try something different here. Um, I'll try to do a screen share here, but I use an ultra wide monitor. So it's going to look weird on my producer's crop. Um, but within Epifan Live, um, you can see within my different channels that I have here on my Pearl Mini. When I expand that a little bit, it shows that I have three different streams and I can start and stop those stream instances individually. So you can see I have the one here running for my SRT stream uh, to, uh, to our Pearl uh, for this webinar. Um, so you can do it this way. And again, this, this Epifan Live dashboard, as opposed to the full administrator one, um, it'll work on any web browser, but it was designed with a mobile browser in mind. So it could be done on an iPad or an Android tablet or a smartphone, but it'll work in a desktop browser like I'm doing now. It'll, it'll work in basically uh, anything. So um, that's, uh, that's a place where you could, um, where you could do that. Um, unfortunately, uh, adding that level of control to the touch screen uh, would be fairly, fairly complex. Um, and again, that's where the single touch control um, might, uh, might come in hand, uh, in handy, um, you know, just by, just by selecting which, which instances you want to participate. Again, not all instances have to participate in that single touch control. For example, I have, I have three here. Maybe I only wanted two of them to participate in the single touch. I, I could, I could configure it that way. It's just a matter of choosing which ones I, uh, I want to participate. So I hope that helps Arnie. Um, so, uh, Jerry, just asking, will this presentation be available for playback? Yes, uh, this will be live on our YouTube channel um, after this is over. We'll have it there as a VOD. Uh, we'll make sure the guys at AP Tech get the link. But, of course, uh, you'll find it in the Epifan Video YouTube channel as well. Um, so you'll definitely find that there. All right. I think that's where we'll leave it, folks. Really appreciate your time today. Thank you so much for joining us. Again, you know, anytime you have any questions about Pearl or Epifan gear, uh, we do have our local representatives down there for you at AP Tech, and you can always reach out to us at Epifan as well. We're happy to help with any questions that you have uh, going forward and helping you choose which Pearl might be the right fit for your use case. Uh, just let us know what you're looking to do and we can help steer you in the right direction as can all the guys at AP Tech. They're uh, wonderful to work with and uh, really appreciate your time today. Thank you. So